what's going on everyone welcome back to another destiny 2 lore video today we're going to be talking about the fire team that never returned from the black garden the kentar 3 in this fire team we will be discussing what happened between the three members which are lisman 13 hunter of the kentar 3 rakana warlock of the kentar 3 yardam 4 titan of the kentar 3 we will be going through the raid armor from the Garden of Salvation from head to the class item. This will be broken into a three-part series reading from each class, the Warlock, Hunter, and Titan. Now, before we dive into this interesting lore, let's set the move by reading the lore tab from the exotic ship, Never Let It Down. You think I can't fly a ship into the Black Garden? Yardum 4, the Kentark 3. Zavala, he's late. Ikora, Savala. Again, Cade has his methods. His habits, you mean. They get results. The hunters and fire teams, Cade marshals, would not be as effective under your command, and you know it, Zavala. Yes, well, I just wish he'd exercise a little more. Who needs to exercise more? Maybe it's because that was a lot of stairs. Cade, I take it you had enough time to put together a report of your scout's findings? A report? I didn't even bring a pencil. Kay, you know how important this is. The Kentark Three harbored a cryptocron. They're warlocks, Zavala. Fellow guardians, not a disease. And yet you agreed to dismantle the order and banish them from the city. After Osiris' exile, it had to be done. But they are still guardians. Oh boy, mom and dad are fighting again. Hey folks, how about I just give my report and you two can argue about this later. Very well. Fine. Right. So their ship crashed after passing through the gate. From signs on the ground, the little Black Garden adventure didn't go so well after that. Huge Vex resistance, but then it looks like they turned on each other as they ran back to the gate. Turned on each other? Are you certain? Zavala, they fought Vex for sure, but the last flight? Just three Guardians, two against one. I put my best team on this. Well, second best, but they're really good. So what did they find? The fight went uphill. One of them had the high ground, Lisbon. Seems like it. It took a lot of guts to charge a good sniper like him, especially without ghosts. Without ghosts? Yeah, pieces of two ghosts were found near the entrance to the undergrowth a few clicks away. The battle started that far away? Eh, that's not so clear. It doesn't look like the actual scrap started until they got well away from there. Kate, okay, this does not make a lot of sense. Oh, I know. Want to hear the weirdest part? Go on. No bodies. Spooky, right? Your second best team, you said. Before we even go any further, let's have a moment of silence for K6. May he rest in peace. Alright. So, as you can see, they sent the fire team on what sounds like a scavenger mission looking for a disturbance of some sort in the Black Garden. And... Through their pillage, they flat out started fighting each other. So, I know you're probably asking because I asked myself the same question. Well, why would they just start fighting each other? So, let's keep on reading and let's find out what happened. This is for the greater good. Which good have you deemed lesser? Lisbon 13, Hunter of the Kentark 3. You don't trust her, Rakana said. I can see that. Lisbon 13 was already walking away. I don't need to trust her. I trust you. A truth he threw lightly over his shoulder, but Rakana felt its weight. And that's enough. Always. Rakana took a quick half-step trying to catch up to a heart that had leapt too far ahead. But her thoughts were heavy. Crypticons learn to judge and balance secrets. Everyone with sense knows ignorance isn't bliss, but few besides the Crypticons know how the terrible truth can be. Those warlocks who join the order must be willing to learn what most would rather not know and to remember what they would rather forget. But accepting a truth is always harder when it's one you cannot share. She'd known it would happen before they met. She knew everything about him before he'd ever laid eyes on her. She even knew about the man Clovis Bray had to kill 13 times to keep him in check and didn't take a warm mind to predict how he'd react to her. She thought that all this knowledge would sever his armor. You should care less about characters when you know how the story ends. 
but then she was a character also. It was her story. Hey, Slowpoke, you coming? Yes. Rakana quickened her pace and met him in the shadow of a cube of stone bejeweled by ruby flowers. His glance caught her as she approached and then shifted to the vista around him. Strange, being through looking glass. Yes? Rakana could see him thinking. His bright eyes were focused on some middle distance as he turned things over in his head. Their mission, what her superior had just told him, and her. His turn toward her camp was abrupt. We should get back to Yarnum 4. He starts shooting before he starts shooting bugs for fun. That there was a basic description in the mind of Rakana the Warlock about her counterpart Lisbon 13. She kind of knows that he can be a reckless, he can be reckless, and at times he can also be a loose cannon as well. So moving right along, let's go to the Gloves of Exaltation. You have the hands of an artist. Fortunately for us, one of those arts is war. Lisbon 13, the Kentark 3. Yardum 4 looked grim. It was the face he always made when he switched from his sometimes abrasive affability to the somber disdain that meant he was taking a situation seriously. There was also that hot glimmer in his eyes that presaged that he was going to say something to provoke her. You underestimated them. There was no venom in the words, just a simple fact plainly stated. Rakana put a hand on Lisbon 13's arm before he leapt to her defense. Yes, she said. There was no point in dissembling and no shame in being wrong. The Vex were the most formidable opponent of the Omnocratic Circle. As beings who shared thoughts across time and realities, the Vex often eluded predictions, even those of the most senior members of her order. A fellow Cryptocron who spoken with a member of the Circle likened it to trying to count all the crystals of a snowflake melting in her hand. The very act of examination changed the result, and often the evidence disappeared before it could be taken into account. But it has given us perspective. Perspective? What perspective is worth nearly dying for? Yarnum's for anger was dulled by curiosity. Rakana glanced at Lisbon 13. He was as reliable as ever. Those defenses were insane, Lisbon 13's. Clever mind made leaps following her logic. The relays, the tethers, the angelics. The Vex really don't want us to be here. That means they consider this place as a weakness. Yardum 4 arrived at the same conclusion. Yes, it's a weakness. Perhaps it's their greatest weakness. Yes, so we must. Rakana stopped. Lisbon 13 raised the weapon they claimed his head on the swivel. Yardum 4 followed suit. What is that? Yardum 4 sounded rattled. Where it's coming from? The three of them stood back to back, back to back, listening. I don't hear, but then she said, If you do this, it can be undone. Some choices change you. This is one of them. Lisbon 13, Hunter of the Kentark 3. You hear that? Who is that? Yarnum 4 sounded like he was on the verge of panic. Rakana had never heard him like that, not even in the worst firefights. Not even in their last battle, which might have been the last battle of the Kentark 3. I hear it. Rakana and Lisbon 13 said as one. All three guardians summoned their ghosts almost simultaneously. Ghosts. Yarnum 4 was first. What have we got? Scan the area for like Lisbon 13 order. Multifasket scan. Rakana barked at her ghosts. Their ghosts all started chattering at once, and they stepped away from one another to hear, fanning out across the grotto and winding the defensive triangle. There's something weird, Rakana's ghost blurred. Words shooting from it at rapid fire. I'm getting static on every wavelength. It's like there's a shadow being cast by every signal. It's nothing specific, but it's everywhere. Wait, no, there's something wrong. I... Rakana's ghost dropped like a stone. She snatched it out of the air. She looked behind her. Lisbon 13 was holding his ghost. Yarnum 4 was picking his up from the ground. The light around them faded, and the gloom of the grotto closed in. Yardum, Lisbon, you okay? I'm fine, came Lisbon 13's reply, and he sounded calm. Yeah, sure. Yardum 4's reply was distant and growing fainter, like he was facing away and moving off. We kind of reached her emergency light. Wait. It was a whisper, but not from her friends. 
It came from somewhere ahead of her, deeper in the grotto. Wait, please, can we just talk for a minute? You said we danced through time, real through realities, together. You can't stop now, Lisbon 13, Hunter of the Kentark 3. We didn't come here for this. Lisbon 13 was still somehow unconvinced. Of course not. Who could have predicted it? Rikana began. But now, with all that's happened, does it matter what our mission was? This is so much more important. Rikana wanted to reassure him, but this was an underment of impossibility, an unwritten story. She had never before felt so unmoored and so free. And awesome. Don't forget how awesome this feels. Yarnum Forrest said as if reading her thoughts. But these things, these powers we've been given, they come from the wrong side. Lisbon 13's eyes pleaded with her. I'm not so sure. And she wasn't. She could be certain of nothing now. You remember on Io, Yarnum 14 could not contain his enthusiasm. We were peering down inside that shipping container with phalanx closing in from all sides. And you, you bastard. You ducked out a little hole in the back and made a run for it. I thought you left us behind. Never, said Lisbon 13 with vehemence. His eyes flashed with anger, but Yarnum 4 didn't seem to notice. I know. The whole box was rattling with bullets and there were explosions and we were shooting when we could. And suddenly, through it all, I hear you screaming. It was like a banshee well. You came screaming back on an interceptor. The scion still in it, you were steering it with the scion's head. I remember. And you rammed it through four phalanxes from the side, and then... You remember this, Rikana? I can't forget. You splashed that interceptor across the shields of another phalanx, and you rolled the explosion over the top. And when you hit the ground behind then, boom! It was the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. Lisbon 13 said nothing. It was as if the story had shut him down. That's us right now. We're doing what you did. This whole universe is like that container. And the last city. And the vanguard. The traveler. They're all inside that box. But what? We just snuck out of a hole in the back. And there's that interceptor. There's not even a scion in it. But here, the metaphor gets a little muddy. Because instead of one interceptor, there's an interceptor for you, a Goliath for me, and a Thresher for Rakana. What would that fight have looked like if we had all their firepower on our side? Something ugly. Lisbon 13 almost spat the words. What is it you want? What is this really about? Lisbon 13, Hunter of the Kentark 3. He said he'd always trust me, Rakana mumbled. Her ears were still ringing and it felt like the ground was rushing up to her feet. Yardum 4 held her upright as they ran for cover. Yeah, he also said he'd never leave us. Turns out you can say a lot of things. In the shelter of an overhang, she allowed Yarnum 4 to lean her back against a wall of stone. She was surrounded by an exuberance of red blossoms. Their simple, sweet scent mixed with a complex of cologne, cordite, ozone, sweat, and blood. She closed her eyes and when she opened them, Yarnum 4 was in inches away from her face peering into her eyes, inspecting her, weighing what reserves she had left. You still with me? He hasn't. What? Left us. Yardum Forrest stepped back and scanned their surroundings. No, I guess not. He winged those goblins so they'd rush us. Yes, he was flushing us out. It worked. Rikana pushed herself free of the flowers and Yardum Four. She began an inventory of her ammo. He doesn't have eyes on us now or he'd take a shot. Rikana wanted to argue against this logic, but she said nothing. He knows we're making our way to the gate. So what does he do, Rikana? Does he get ahead of us to block us, or he hit us from behind when we're not looking? Rikana thought about the two men, the Lisbon she knew, and the one he still carried with him. Somewhere behind those gleaming eyes, Rikana, we could really use that brain of yours right now. This isn't it. What? This is isn't how the story is supposed to end. So, looks like we have a traitor in the midst of this fire team. Lisbon 13. They all received some sort of power or energy that sucked the light out of their ghosts, but then in the midst of making a decision, 
on what to do, someone felt they had to make a decision for themselves. I say it was a selfish one. Is this the end of the second best fire team? Will Yardum 4 and Wakana escape from Lisbon 13 and reach the gate? Or will Lisbon 13 end their existence? Join me next week when we dive into the armor for the hunter. This has been great. Christmas Gaming, signing off. Peace.